This tutorial explains how to get all possible subsets of a vector object in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you two examples and both of these examples are based on the vector object that we can create with line two of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new vector object is appearing, which is called myVec. And we can print this vector object to the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see that our vector contains three elements, C1, C2, and C3. Now, if we want to return all possible combinations of this vector object, then we can apply the functions of the combinet package. And in order to use these functions, we first need to install and load the package, as you can see in lines five and six. I have installed the package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line six of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the functions of the combinet package, as you can see in lines eight to 12. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data object is appearing, which is called mycombi1. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 13 of the code. And then you can see at the bottom that we have returned a list. And this list contains seven list elements. And each of these list elements contains a possible subset of our vector object. So the first three list elements contain simply one of the data elements in our vector C1, C2, and C3. In the fourth list element, you can see the combination of two of the elements, C1 and C2. And in the last list element of our list, you can see a subset that contains all the possible elements in our data. So in this first example, I have explained how to use the combinet package to create a list with all possible subsets of a vector. However, it's also possible to use the sets package for this task. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 15 of the code. And for this example, we first need to install and load the sets package, as you can see in lines 15 and 16. I have installed this package as well, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 16 of the code. And after running this line of code, we are able to use the set power function, as you can see in line 18 of the code. So as you can see, this code is much simpler than the previous code in example one. And then I'm storing the output of this in a new data object, which I'm calling mycombi2. So if you run line 18 of the code, you can see that this data object is appearing as well at the top right. And we can print it to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 19 of the code. And then you can see that the representation of this data object is different compared to the combinet package. However, it also contains all combinations that are possible for the subsetting of our vector object. One minor difference is that it also contains an empty subset, which was not the case in the application of the combinet package. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage, statisticsglobe.com, because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching, see you in the next video.